there was a couple pastors that I had heard from that they uh, had gone to this pastors conference just to try to be better pastors. It was high profile, very nice place. Um, there'd be a lot. There was tons of people there, and uh, it was one of those things where kind of the who's who of pastors goes to and. And they want to become better pastors, and they come away from that um, saying what a lot of us pastors normally do is, how can I compete with that? Encourage me. How can I? There's no way I could be what they're representing because they they look at what's on the stage, and they see a guy that's maybe young, and they're not. Uh, He's slender, and they're not. He's fashionable, and they are not. There's so many things that... Uh, he represents, you know, he's got a church in a big city and they're in the country. He runs a, uh, a multi-site church where they've got one. He runs thousands. They barely run a hundred. And it's easy to, it's easy to be in, in this setting and not like who you are, not like where you're at, feel like you're woefully inadequate and you're desperately needing somebody to encourage you. Am I worth anything? Am I doing it right? Do I have any value at this? And I want to encourage you today that you do have value. And where you're at and what you're doing, you do have value. You do have purpose. And and God is doing something wonderful in other people's lives through you if you're giving him the chance and the opportunity. There's a, there's a book called The Heart of a Great Pastor by H.B. Uh, London and Neil Wiseman. And uh, I really encourage you, if you're a pastor, get a copy of this book. It's not a new book. It's been around a while, but this book has really made a difference in my life. Uh, If you're not a pastor, go get a copy of this for your pastor, because this is one of those books that that, uh, has so much good in it that basically says, bloom where you're planted, and where you're planted makes a difference. It means something. There's something that H.B. London said here, and, uh, and I wanted to share this uh, today in this, in this video. He says, I see many of our colleagues in ministry who have pretty much given up on their uniqueness. They have become like clones, almost afraid to venture out and to be unique. I talk to many who live uh, in such fear of failure that they never reach their potential. Here are some stretching suggestions. Dare to dream an impossible dream for your ministry. Go out beyond your comfort zone. Invest in an original thought every day. Ask God for a challenge that will test every gift and skill that you possess. Spend time with people who stimulate you to continual create uh, creative newness. Be a hero. Live a life others view as anointed. Remember the scripture in Psalms 139, verse 14. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. God had you in mind before you took your first breath, and his intention was that you would live and minister uniquely, different different than any other pastor. You are a wonderful original. Celebrate your uniqueness. Sharpen your mind, body, and spirit and will to maximum usefulness. The best thing that I could, in going with what, Brother London's saying is whether if you're if you're a pastor and even if you're not a pastor, this is good advice and it applies. Be the best you that you can be. Be who God made you. Live in the place that God has made you at uh, to 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 excel at it. If you're a youth pastor, be the best youth pastor you can be where you're at in the culture you at. You're at, you're, you may not have the biggest church. You may not have the biggest ministry. You may not have all the things that other people have. And that's okay. That's all right. What's fascinating is that if, if you run 150 people in your church, you're bigger than, than two-thirds of the churches in our nation. The average church is less than 75 people. You know, you, we make up small rural churches, make up the bulk of all churches around the world around our, our country. And we sometimes want to compare ourselves. We want to say, well, I'm, I'm not this person. I'm not that way. I'm not that creative. I don't have these things. And that's okay. Be the best you that you can be where you're at. If you're a housewife, 
if you're a lawmaker, if you're a teacher, if you're a coach, whatever you do for a living, do it as unto Jesus Christ. Do it for the lives that you'll help make a difference in. Because I promise you, your life will make a difference. What you do matters. My little place here in Poen uh, doesn't matter to anybody else. But it matters to the people who come here. And the people who come to Poen Assembly of God are worth having the adequate gospel presented to them. They're worth the time and the tension and the greater opportunity that's shared on their behalf. They are worth my best effort. And so when I give my best effort, maybe it won't make a difference to people in Minnesota. Maybe it will never be heard of in Florida. Yeah, there, there's not going to be any great authors writing books and they're talking about, you know, Mike Sullivan said this. They won't say that. And that's okay. You and I have got to be okay with just being us and just being where we're at and what we're doing because what we do matters. Where we're at matters. Your life was created just for you, the way you are. And you can impact people that I never will. You can impact people that these big name guys never will. So let me encourage you with this thought. Be the best you that you could be. Right where you're at, in your church, in your community, in your situation, in whatever social strata you're finding yourself in. If you can better yourself, better yourself. But don't don't ever better yourself out of a sense of, I compete with other people. Don't better yourself with a sense of, I've got to do better than someone else. If you're going to be better at something, do it because it'll give God more glory. It'll open up more doors for the kingdom. Don't do it out of pride. Don't do it out of jealousy. Love who you are because God loves who you are. And he loves you the way that you are. And he is stretching you to become more than you are if you let yourself be that way. God bless you. I pray that you have a fantastic week. Learn to love yourself. Learn to be the best you that you can be and touch lives in the process. God bless you.